right, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Goonies World. I am Johnny Farrow, also known as Sean. And with me, as always, via the internet, is Meanie, also known as Ryan. What's up? And Goonie himself, also known as Colin. Yo. And I believe that Ryan will... uh, this episode will be taking us through our second installment of our Boot Hill adventure in Dodge City, Kansas. That is correct. And uh, it uh, could be the the final. It really just depends on how things go. Uh, you know, you say it could be the final. We're going we're gonna to end up doing like five more. It just po- uh, that <laughs> is also a possibility. So uh, I believe we left off and uh, with you guys... Um, Going to sleep at the uh, Widow, Widow Jones, yeah, Widow Jones. house. Yeah. And, yes, uh, we did. The following morning, you will wake up, of course, as you do. Uh, who wakes up first? <laughs> I'm always first. No, uh, yeah, I don't know. What do we want to roll for or something? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure. I, uh, I, uh, I, I, I fancy myself probably a late sleeper. Yeah, I'd probably get up early. All right, so uh, you get up and, uh, you know, the, now they don't, this is fairly minimalist sort of accommodation, so there's not like, I mean, there's a, a, a bathroom and stuff, but they don't have like an actual bath. You know, so you can't like bathe or whatever, but you can, you know, yeah. slap some water on your face and whatever. That's right. I'll take a little bath, just a little gypsy bath. You know, splash a little water on my face and hands. Yeah, um, I could really go for a sponge bath, but uh, I don't think you're down for that, huh? Hey, I don't think I know you well enough yet to sponge you down, Uncle Sam. <laughs> Completely understandable. And if you're just joining us this episode, he is not my uncle, nor is his name Sam. I'm not the government. I'm uh, Barnaby Baxter, Barnaby. going under the alias of Sam. And I am Seamus O'Shaughnessy, and, the Eastern. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you know, one thing I'd like to do today, Sam, is, uh, you remember that fellow we saw last night at the... Look, in, in private, you can call me Barnaby. I would appreciate that. Uh, Barnaby? But All right, don't Barnaby. Get, just get, get, don't get them confused, though. In public... It's Sam. Just the two of us, it's Barnaby. Well, you're trusting me not to get confused, so I I guess I should uh, honor that. But, uh, I don't know, Barnaby Baxter, it's a bit of a mouthful, you know. How about BB? I don't like that. You don't like that? All right, then. Well, anyway, you remember that fellow we saw last night? Uh, out of the saloon, bookish fella smoking the pipe. Oh, the man whose nose buried in the book, yes. Well, I was a little curious about that fella as well, but I got so distracted with Ella and, uh, you know figuring out whether she was a prostitute or not. <laughs> and, and it's not like we don't have plenty to do, but, uh, you know, if he's around having a spot of breakfast somewhere, we ought to talk to him. Otherwise, I, I say we should head north today. You know, we uh, we heard that those Longhorn boys were looking for... Uh, had a ranch, what, about half a day's north, and that uh, old Reverend Davis went off north when he was looking to... Uh, well, he was going to convert the Indians, you know. And then, yeah, north was about the only uh, direction... Uh that was an option to That's us. That's right. And then there's those Thurston boys, too, who never showed up with their wares to sell. But, uh, you know, if there's anything, ac- if there's any action happening this early in town, we could ask a few more questions before we go, maybe. If nothing else, we got to get some some, some cornbread and some bacon for breakfast for lucky a few nice eggs. That's for sure. I ain't leaving on an empty stomach. Uh, and I would like to talk to uh, this uh, bookish gentleman. Uh, my maybe... He could answer a few questions. Uh, who knows? Well, you know, fellows who read books are generally fairly bright, I'd imagine. Can't well, do it well, myself. Yeah, well, sometimes, you know, well, we don't actually know if the man is reading or just smelling the pages. Well, you I wonder know. what they smell like. <laughs> he could be one of uh, some kind of page pervert or something. <laughs> page pervert? <laughs> All those page perverts tossing off into so many good books. You never know on some first. people. You never know. Well, we could take a look out for him. Where did we, uh, is there a place we could get some breakfast around here? 
I wonder if the widow's got anything, but they didn't I didn't I see a little uh a place to eat last night. Indeed, it was closed uh, when you arrived, but uh, you assume it will be open this morning. Oh, I bet you they're doing brisk business this morning. I can taste that coffee already. It's just directly next door to uh, to the saloon, so two basically two doors down uh, is Max. Max, all right. Well, we'll ch- I'll check on me horse, Shamrock. I'll check on yours. What's your horse's name again? Lucky. Dixie. Dixie, Dixie. Dixie. That's right. I'll check on Dixie for you too, and. Uh, We'll go over next door and get a bite. Maybe we'll see that bookish fellow over there. Uh, the horses are, are, you know, doing horse things. Ah, oh, there's um, a good lass. Um, you just sit in this stable and continue to be a poor quality horse. I'll see you in a little bit. You no, know, they're just uh, hitched up out, out front the uh, 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 boarding house. Um, but uh, surely we would probably approve of a handful of uh, oats or something. Um and so, after checking on the horses, uh, you walk down the wooden sidewalk, presumably over to Max. Oh, it smells good in here. It kind of does, as a matter of fact. And as you walk in the door, you note, uh, much to your good fortune, that the bookish gentleman um, is seated at a... There, there are several long tables here. It looks like people just come in and just sit down, you know, or whatever, um, what kind of wherever they want. Um, he, he's the only person seated. He's got some food and he's eating it, um, and he's still got his book, you know, laid down on the table and he's reading it obviously as he eats. Mm-hmm. And uh, also, the uh, tall black uh, gentleman who uh, you had seen playing poker last night. Um, is standing at the counter uh, and he turns around just as you walk in the door um, and uh, gives you kind of a, you know, tip of the hat and a little polite nod and uh, tip it right back. Has a seat um, across from uh, the the bookish fellow and says, uh, Morning, Marvin. And uh, the uh, there's a blue-eyed bald man uh, standing kind of behind the counter uh, with like a, a handwritten menu behind him on the wall. Um, and he looks over at you and says, Morning. Ah, oh, tough of the morning to you. How does it pre- I don't suppose I get a rasher of bacon and some cornbread. Well, you walk over and you see the menu. I mean, and it's, it's you know, you salt pork and grits and potatoes and eggs. and you know, I've had enough potatoes. I've had enough potatoes to last me a lifetime. Thank you. No, thank you. Uh, biscuits and gravy. Um, oh, biscuits and gravy. In addition to, uh, you know, standard sort of American type fare, uh, he's also offering like uh, haggis and black pudding. and. Uh, oh, there you go. Nice taste of home. I think I'll have a little black pudding for breakfast. What about you, Uncle Sam? I, you'd love it. Well, trust me. Have yourself like a nice to, bit of haggis. Well, I'd like to order a whole uh, platter, but... I don't think uh, I can afford such a thing, so uh, maybe just uh, some uh, pork. Yeah, pork for me, please. You don't want any eggs or anything, then? Well, let me see. uh, Look at my old purse there. I suppose I could go with a couple eggs on top of the pork. Right, lads. Well, uh, now just uh, go have a seat there and... uh bring it out when it's uh, ready all right appreciate it and if i might say it's uh, always nice to meet a you know a fella from the isles is it uh, am i detecting a little uh, edinburgh in your accent there friend you might be indeed ah all right yes well uh, you know scots irish what's the difference right <laughs> <laughs> All, uh, all Gaelic the, in the end of the day, I suppose. Uh, them's fighting words in New York, though, my friend, I'll tell you that. And, uh, you know, I think we'll just go, if it's like family-style seating in here, maybe we'll just go sit down in you know, a friendly manner next to uh, Marvin. And uh, I didn't catch the other guy's name if he said it. We'll sit next to the black dude and and Marvin. All right, will you walk over and yeah. have, have a seat? I don't know why I'm picturing like there's like checkered red and white and tablecloth, you know, on the on the table. Not fancy enough yeah. place for a tablecloth. No, it's just, no tablecloth. Uh, it's no, like a wood, cloth. wood plank picnic table almost, like a really long one. More like just a big board. 
Hey, fellas, do you mind if we join you? The bespectacled man looks up from his book and says, uh, um, uh, as you please. Uh, yeah, I, uh, you won't even know we was here if uh, we didn't alert you, I bet. So focused, so intent on uh, reading. What you reading there, boy? Uh, I'm reading a tome on uh, all manner of uh, interesting phenomena. He's a polymath. Interesting phenomena, you say? Indeed. What do you well, mean? <laughs> well, I, I mean, uh, what's so interesting about it? It's probably a big science book. Well, not exactly. And you, you kind of look down and there's like a drawing of like an ape type creature. Um, and uh, anyway, the guy, the guy says, uh, well, anyway, I'm Marvin. This is my friend Ernest. He oh, says, hey, Ernest, saw you last night playing a little poker. Uh, yeah, I cleaned, I cleaned them, them boys out. Yeah, you, you would have cleaned me out too, probably as well. I couldn't even play the little stupid cage game that uh, oh, uh, Captain What's His Face was. Was it Captain Gregory? Yeah, yeah that's him. Yeah. Hey, listen, fellas, I got a quick question for you. There's some other stuff we actually have to ask you, but do you know a young lass in town named Ella? Well, yes. Uh, Songbird. I, I, what'd you uh, What'd you say? Songbird. Songbird. That's she lovely. Sings, she sings with the band. At oh, time. that's how she makes a living. Oh. I had a bit of an embarrassment last night, actually, fellas, but I won't get into it right now. Actually, it was more my misunderstanding and my uncle's embarrassment. <sighs> yeah, I took the bullet on that one. Uh, such things happen. Hey, uh, listen, fellas, uh... I don't know if you've heard, but we're in the business of finding people. And there's a couple fellas that we're looking for, and I thought maybe, uh, you never know, maybe you could help set us on the right path. Uh, Happy to try. Well, we're, first of all, we're looking for the Longhorn Boys. We hear they got a, you know, a ranch about, uh, what, half a day's ride north of here. We're thinking about heading out there today. Have you heard anything about them? Seen them around? Hear any word about them? Glowing they across the prairie? Uh, I have not uh, seen them around town in uh, quite some time. Yeah, I haven't either. Mm. I but think I we're asking know. the wrong boy. This man hasn't looked up, you know, since we seen him. So this boy ain't gonna know where's, who's, where's, what. You know, this boy, uh, watch it. Re this monkey on the cover there. I see a monkey. Well, that's an ape, a hominid ape, sir. Well, I don't know no difference between the two. I'm actually on my way out west in search of in search of this wild man. <laughs> what a wild man you say, like an ape man? Yes, that's it. Uh, plenty of wild man out the west. They just ain't covered in fur necessarily. You no. should go back east, where I come from. Just uh, you know, just south of the river. There we got. Uh, they tell stories of the Jersey Devil. Another wild man. You ever heard tell of him? Of course I have. Uh, I was for a second, I, uh, for, for a minute there, I thought maybe you were one of these fellas who, uh, who believes that, uh, you know, uh, humans came from, from, from apes or monkeys or something. I may be, sir. Is this a problem? No, it's not a problem for me. Everyone's uh, entitled Dirty to Dirty evolutionists. Their, their no, I, I don't have a problem. Ah, you know I'm a good Catholic boy. I I know the world's only like three thousand years old. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it could be, could be. Stranger things have happened, you know. Well, at the end of the day, I don't think it uh, really matters much to me and whether I got a good night's sleep or uh, ate that day. Hey, listen though, maybe uh, you know the Reverend Davis. Are either of you all familiar with him? I hear he's uh, not been seen in a while. He was going to go out and convert the Indians. I heard that as well, yes. Um, I, um... I think that was probably a fool's errand. He's probably gotten himself killed. Yeah, I don't have too much hope for that fella. Well, I hate to see a... I hate to see a fella walk off on their own. But, uh... And finally, I don't suppose any of you know anything about the Thurston boys. Oh, I know them quite well. 
Well, you know, they're supposed to, I guess uh, it's my understanding they should have been here already to, to do some uh, some commerce in there. They haven't come in. Yes, they are typically here on Wednesdays. But on Tuesdays, I believe they pass through Cimarron. Uh, you know, off to the west. I think that's part of their route. Um, well, that's something. That's a direction. Was somebody looking for them? As yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, yes. As I say, we've uh, we sort of taken it upon ourselves to be professional uh, uh, people finders. But, well, uh, well, mm-hmm, we're hunting around for these fellows. I, I, I wondering, uh, maybe you want us to hunt for this uh, wild monkey man as well? Is there a re- reward out for this fellow? I'm not aware of any sightings or rumors of uh, this wild man in the plains. Um, more out in the uh, northern California and Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Well, we'll still keep an eye out for him just in case. That's right. You never know. He could go on vacation sometimes, maybe. Well, if you do see any evidence of such a thing that you could bring to me, I would greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I sure hope uh, this is uh, something that... Uh, I could profit off of, you know. I mean, not every day someone finds a, a wild man out there. Well, that's very true. We'll, we'll, we'll keep our eye out for it, but uh, as you say, perhaps, perhaps uh, I don't know that there's a lot of places to hide in the plains, you know. Well, if you're, if you're going out looking, looking around for things, mm-hmm. if you happen to see any evidence of that damn ghost rider who got my horse... Back up a minute. Did you say Ghost Rider? That's right. Everybody nah. knows the Ghost Riders. No, nobody's never, nobody's ever seen him, but he's he. Everybody knows, and he comes and takes the horses. Well, some sort of supernatural horse thief? Is that what you're saying? Oh or, yes, yes, yes. The Ghost Rider. Well, maybe he's he, just super stealthy. Well, if you could, uh, if you. Do come across to any evidence, or indeed the Ghost Rider himself? I believe there is a one thousand dollars reward for him. Oh boy! Well, okay. So now, what's this fellow look like? Is he see-through? Well, nobody's ever seen him. Nobody knows what he looks like. What's your horse look like? A silver streak. Silver streak. Well, that's the horse's name. Right. Black horse with a silver mane and a silver tail. Well, that should Best be damn horse spot. I ever had. All right, we'll look out for that. Maybe there's an invisible man riding on top of it. We'll have to find out if we see him. That's right. Hey, if, if, as long as he's, you know, if he's invisible, he can still be punched. Unless he's, like, you know, completely. What's the word for it? I don't know. I Incorporeal? <laughs> that sounds about right, yeah. Yeah, we could keep an eye out for all that. Uh, find this all intriguing. I mean, I imagine. It, okay. it's not it's not as big of a deal now that I cleaned up at the poker table because uh, now I can afford to buy me a new horse, but it won't be the same as Silver Streak, I'm afraid. Well, hold off for a day or two. Let us see what we can do. Now, are you all sure you're not playing a prank on us now, sending us on a wild goose chase? You want us to catch some goose, some geese as well? Well, if you happen to cross any geese, they do, they taste quite good. Yeah, I thought you was a real smart Alec. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll just go out there and see what we see, and uh, maybe we'll find everything that we've been told about. Come back with a whole flock of weird uh, animals and people. That's right. And cash in. <laughs> so Doc, or not Doc, but uh, Mac, rather, um, emerges from uh, the back with three plates of food and sits one down in front of Ernest and one in front of each of you. Well, I will tuck in, as they say. Very well. Uh, And um, Marvin turns and he says, uh, you know, I believe I saw you uh, chatting with the Virgils last night. Now, which one was the Virgils? 
you know, there's the uh, the tall, skinny guy with the nice suit and the short, fat guy. Well, okay. Uh, is that the one? Hmm? Is that the group that has the lady with him who dresses like a fella? No, no. They were you were they were at the chuckle luck table with you. Ah, oh, those see, yeah, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. those fellas. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, my, what about him now? Yeah, my attention, I was sort of distracted by Ella. Yes, I can understand. She's quite attractive. But, uh, yeah, these... Uh, the, so, Virgil Stanton and Virgil Pitts. Stanton is the tall guy. Pitts is the short guy. Collectively known as the Virgils, of course. But um, I'm very suspicious of them. Well, first of all, they're virulent racists. <laughs> I know that's right, says the artist. Well, that ain't nothing uh, too strange around these parts. I was in a few race riots myself, you know, but uh, uh, just for the fun of it, really, you know. It wouldn't be a summer in New York without a good old uh, Irish versus blacks, you know, punch him up. Happens all the time. <laughs> Well, uh, perhaps that's true. But, uh... First, well, anyway. Uh, I'm very, uh... Suspicious of their behavior. So if you... Happen... In your time here... To, um... Encounter any... Evidence that the Virgils are engaged in, um... how to say it um shenanigans shenanigans is a good word that's know. an irish word i think sounds irish it sure sounds irish I don't know if it is but it should be <laughs> i'll take it uh, hmm yeah we'll keep an eye out you just uh you don't really have a. Uh, it's just a feeling huh no uh, you haven't seen them doing anything you got any idea what sort of uh chicanery there's another good one uh uh, or shenanigans or tomfoolery they might be up to you know um, how to characterize it um, being out really late um, possibly visiting people in their homes that don't necessarily wish to be visited hmm well, have you said something to the to that mustachioed, uh, what is he, a marshal or a sheriff? I'm not sure what he is. A marshal, yes. You said, have, you, have you ever mentioned anything to him? Mm, no, I, because I don't, I'm not sure he would uh, take me seriously. Mm, yeah. All right, I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. Well, <clears throat> I think, uh, that does sound suspicious, but uh, we'll have to put that on the end of the list. we got to, I think, get going if we're going to go up north and, and perhaps west as well. I don't know. But uh, when we return, maybe we'll uh, look around and uh, follow these uh, gentlemen or something, you know, maybe eavesdrop on them, figure out what they're doing or something. Yeah, I was thinking maybe uh, Uncle Sam, a plan for the day might be that we just uh, head off to the north, you know. Uh, towards this ranch about half a day if we might have to camp out a night i don't know but if we uh and i heard that uh, the reverend davis went northwest all right so we just got to start swinging west and then uh, until we're like due west from the town i guess and then uh yeah well, oh i should tell you perhaps that if you were planning on visiting cimarron to, to perhaps track down the whereabouts of the Thurston boys. That's that that's yeah, that's the western thingy. Then uh, you may you may wish to rethink that. Oh yeah. Yeah, because I I suspect that um if they are there, they're probably in trouble with the law. Uh. Like, mm. They they travel around selling things. Well, one thing. Opium. Oh, you don't say opium, huh? Although that was a Chinaman's racket. Well, I'm sure that's where they're getting it from. Yeah. Well, all right, well, we'll, we'll, uh, 
we'll kind of put that as a lower priority. We'll see what happens throughout the day. If nothing else, though, I say first stop maybe ought to be uh, that ranch. And if we're going to make it by midday, maybe we better get going. Yeah, the ranch, I believe. Uh, you refer to uh, the Longhorn Boys ranch. Yeah, them Longhorn Boys hang out, sharpen their knives and whatnot. Yeah, so I, I believe that is a, a, about half a day's ride due north, so... All right. Well, if I see a wild monkey man on the way... Yes, please yeah, we'll, do. We'll let you know. Capture it and, and return it to me, if you can. All yeah, right. well, yeah, that's a tall order, but we'll, we'll still try our best. Yeah, and we'll keep an eye out for Silver Streak as well, friend. Thank you kindly. All right. Well, ah, very good. Me old mother couldn't have done better, I say to the landlord. That's not true. Nobody's better than my mother. Aye, lads, thank you for coming by. All right. You're going to make me slip over from Irish to Scottish soon. (laughs) (laughs) I've been lying this whole time, guys. I'm from Tennessee. No, I'm joking. (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, let's uh, let's, let's go out and mount up. All right, so you go out and uh, hop aboard your... Aboard. <laughs> hop a pawn. All aboard. <laughs> now we have one of those big uh, prairie wind ships, right, with the sails that just take us across the, the plains. Yeah. Hop yeah. aboard. Wild West airship. That's right. Um, but yeah, you get on you get on your horses and uh, head off to the north. Let us see. Let's ride. All right. So after about three and a half, four hours. Um, right as it's getting to be, you know, what, early afternoon, um, you see off in the distance, um, a house surrounded by fields. I mean, there's not, there's hardly a tree, you know, I mean, and of course this being, the, the prairie, you can see quite a ways because there's not a lot of obstructions. Uh, and so from quite a, from a fair distance away, you, you spy this house um, surrounded by pasture. Um, but it is like basically just a burned ruin. Mm. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Yeah, something, something befell these fellas. It was the monkey man. <laughs> They yeah, the monkey the man sport. started the fire. Yeah, no, they, he's not that smart of a monkey. <laughs> uh, maybe we ought to just go over there, though, and take a look around, you know. You used to be a, a lawman. You could uh, put the pieces together, you know, the clues. That's We'd go right. back with a coherent story rather than, oh, place burned down. We could maybe figure out who did it or who done it. <laughs> That's right. Uh... There's a thing called clues, and uh, I say uh, we go find some. Hey, let's go get a clue. All right. Well, you ride up uh, towards the towards the building, and eventually uh, you come to a fence, which is with the gate is is open, um, and there's a small sign sort of above the gate uh, that says Longhorn Ranch. Um, so clearly the right place. And you ride through the open gate. Um, go up to the house and uh, I dismount and start looking around, I guess? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Start looking for bodies, you know, all that stuff. Well, uh, you dismount and sort of and this has clearly been s- some time ago anyway because it's not like smoldering anymore and, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and the house itself is not particularly large, really. Um, and in, indeed, it's, it seems rather fortunate that it didn't, the fire here didn't like start a, you know, massive like grass fire or something. One thing I, I, I should mention that you do notice is there are no cattle. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, but going inside the smallish. Where's the beef, I say? <laughs> well, you ever heard the story of the cattle raid of Cooley with Coo Cullen? It's an old Irish legend. It's fascinating stuff. All I heard is coo 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 a bunch <laughs> of Irish gibberish. Well, I'm telling you, though, that this has obviously been a cattle raid of some kind. Could be. 
and um, walking inside the uh, remains of the structure. I mean, the roof's gone, and I mean, so you're not in any danger of having it fall on you or anything. Um, but s- seated in a circle and tied together, you see five individuals who are not, I mean, they're singed and stuff, but they're not like completely burnt up. Um, and upon inspection, it's clear they've all been shot in the head with, you know, a gun. Well, Mr. Salt, the Longhorn boys are right here in their own ranch. We got to go. De- we got. We're gonna have to let Marshal Mustache know about this one. Sure. Uh, I suppose they've taken everything of value. Of course, yeah. um, the cattle be in the real value in a place like this. Well, um, you can. You're free to search the the bodies. I, mean, uh, I, mean, they're, they're... I feel a little funny about it. I'll let my uncle do it though, if he wants. Well, I got no qualms with that. Uh, I will uh, see what these gentlemen have left behind, if anything. So, going through uh, the pockets and such of of these five folks. Um, you find uh, a pocket watch and a uh, sell this and one one hundred dollar bill. Ooh. Well, now we see uh, in the law profession, uh, if we find something like this, we know this ain't no robbery. This is personal. Well, either that. Or... Yeah, yeah. I wonder. You know, your experience. Do you have any experience with tracking? I'm not saying that the two of us alone go tracking off after him, but if we had some general direction, maybe. Well, that's part of the part of the job, I say, but uh, that's not particularly my strong suit. But well, maybe we should uh, go out and ride around the perimeter and see if we can observe any uh, signs of where they might have got off to. Of course, these bandits are probably clever. They probably ride off in one direction, you know, and then circle back around later. And there could be, you know, uh, other, like, uh, local politics going on. Longhorn boys could have enemies we don't know about. Maybe someone back in town could shed some light on it. Well, let's look around and see... Uh, and after that, I don't know what more we could do. I'd, I'd agree with you, mystery solved. At least in terms of what happened to him. But who done it? that's another thing entirely. So do you, um... Do you have tracking, Colin, by chance? I don't... Think so? No. Okay. I have orient orienteering, and that's about it. Besides riding, and I don't even have riding. So my arse hurts about now. All right. So you don't you don't have trackings, but you can make a tracking roll anyway, and maybe you get a one. Well. Uh, let me look around. So, no. Yeah, it doesn't seem um, obvious. Uh, I don't see anything either. In what direction? Cover the tracks. I just thought of something. Maybe this here is the ghost, the work of the ghost rider. Yeah, but I, I mean, thought he steals horses. He's not known to ride cattle. <laughs> yeah. All right, well... well well, uh, that's the answer to that one. I, I know it's getting a bit into the afternoon here, but maybe on the way back we just swing real far out to the west, you know. I'm not saying as far as uh, Cimarron, but uh, maybe someone's heard tell of the Reverend Davis. Otherwise, that's how we get back and report to the Marshal what's happened here. Doesn't, t- uh, doesn't hurt to, uh, to take kind of a westernly route back. Yeah, it's kind of like a big loop, you know, like a horseshoe. Well, you guys ride off to the, uh, to the southwest. And let us see what happens. Okay, um, and, oh man, this would be interesting. Um, excuse me. Uh, after, um, about two hours 
riding uh, off to, to the southwest, you you see um, a small, uh, and this is emerging on the horizon uh, for a while before it becomes clear what it is. But there's a uh, line um, of like teepees. Oh. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so I don't know if you want to keep going in that direction. You're more than welcome to. Um, I'm kind of curious. I've never actually seen one of them, you know, really up close. I mean, not in their natural environment, right? I saw a couple of them at the fair uh, on the on a 15th Street. In Manhattan, we well, have. Yeah. Well, in my experience, <clears throat> close you get, the more danger you're in. Well, it's not like we're trying to convert him or anything. I'm just asking if they've seen the guy. Well, yeah, you know, you want to take, <clears throat> get a closer look? That's fine. Uh, I mean, if if it's like you know, they're not savages, right? I mean, you go in. Well, wait a minute, maybe they are savages. I don't know, but. Uh, yeah. Well, that's what they're called, but uh, my uncle I've says that the Eng- my uncle says the English the English call the Irish savages, and I can tell you, you know. So, yeah, I'm not your real uncle no more. No, I'm talking about my real uncle though, yeah. but uh, sometimes I get all my father figures confused. You know, my own dad ro- rose up against the English, you know, and the Great Rising, and uh, it never really. That's- I'm trying. You, you're jibber jabbering on now. I'm, I can't hear myself think. Well, let me just tell them. I'll be, then I'll tell you what. I'm, I'm suggesting, and if and if you're too scared, we don't have to do it. But I say we, you know, put our hands up or uh, figure out some sort of white flag business in, in an unthreatening manner, right up there. Well, uh, maybe yeah. there'll be an attractive squaw, and and but I am going to describe that. You know, I'll be riding with my hands up and non-threatening and everything else. Well, and right now, you're far enough away um, that you can't even see, into, like, much more than just the, the dark Two outlines days, of the buildings. Um, um, but, yeah, I, I mean, that's that's probably a good idea. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey uh, Barnaby, have you ever heard of these fellas who they, they go native, you know? Have you heard of these fellas? Maybe they fall in love with some some squaw, or maybe they just love the, the freedom in the open ranges. Could you ever see yourself going native? <laughs> well, I, um, yeah, but these uh, Pinkertons and uh, bounty hunters keep after me, you know, long enough, I have to. It's the only could, safe uh, place around here. And I, we're talking, like, while we're riding towards them with I, my hands are up anyway. Yep. Even once I get close enough, I think they can see me. And it's nice not like we're slow, charging. Nice and slow. Well, maybe you could, you know, if you spent a lot of time outside, you'd get really, really tanned, you know. And you could grow your hair out long, and you could settle down with these people. You had to lose a lot of weight, though, because I've never seen a chubby Indian. No offense. Well, yeah, I think, uh... But then they got no, you know, buffaloes. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I can, uh... Yeah, if I can lose pounds while eating delicious buffaloes. Well, maybe you could uh, disguise yourself as a Hawaiian because at this at that uh, fair on 15th Street in Manhattan that I was telling you about, they had a, a a Hawaiian king there, and boy, I tell you what, he was as big and thick and round as a as a pumpkin. You sure got a lot of ideas in your noggin. Well, if you really want adventure, I say let's go to Hawaii after all this is over. Well, yeah, don't get ahead of yourself now. I guess that's a little far west for now. We're still in bleeding the Kansas territory here. Actually, is it Kansas now? I think it's Kansas. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a state. Yeah, it's Kansas, yeah. Um, so you're approaching slowly, uh, and you're starting to be able to make out, uh, you know, some uh, people walking around and bustling around and you know doing stuff. Um, you can see some smoke from a fire rising into the sky as well. Um, make an observation roll, guys. Oh, I fail it by two. Good luck. I also fail it by four. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
I'm going to give your horses observation rolls as well. <laughs> Which they also fail. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. It All wouldn't right. be the first time I've blundered into a situation. All right, well... <clears throat> um, so you approach the... Um, the... Uh, Indian camp and uh, almost I mean before you get very close a group of about eight of them sort of ride out to meet you and uh, they've got bows they're not they don't have arrows knocked they're not aiming them at you, and you've got your hands up and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but they ride out and uh, stop a fair distance from you, but definitely arrow shooting distance. Uh, yeah. Probably 20, 25 yards. And uh, the one at the front who's, you know, got kind of a traditional headdress on and, and stuff. Magnificent specimen, isn't he? Um, begins speaking in a language that you don't understand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're talking amongst themselves whether well, they're going to shoot us with their arrows. Is he talking to us, or are they talking about He's shouting yeah, to us. Oh, I thought they were talking yeah, to each other. Yeah. Well, well, of course, I don't understand what he's saying. I don't understand what he's saying either. I bet someone, one of them over there has got to, got to understand English. But I don't like the way he's shouting at all. Well, it's, it's a, not super aggressive, but it's just loud because he's kind of far away. I'm going to yell back, we're just looking for a friend of ours. And if he's come to harm, that's no real big problem or no skin off our nose. We just want to find out uh, if we should, you know, hire a new uh, preacher or not. And uh, I, even though I don't think they can understand it, did someone come here recently trying to convert you all to Christianity? And maybe something bad happened to him. It's okay if it did. Just need to know so I can scratch him off the list. Do you understand? No. Well, there's an answer. That's an answer. You ain't seen the but, Reverend Davis, then. But I'm not sure he qu- completely understood what you were asking. I'm not sure either. Maybe I'll hold up a little cross sign with and my we fingers. We need to speak a, a little bit more in simple terms, you know, like um, let's well, then see. You talk uh, to him then. Uh, preacher, I'm gonna hold up like a. I'm gonna mime. See you. You watch me now. I'm gonna. I'm gonna to. Uh, like mime, like I'm having a like a book and talking, and um, and then I don't I don't know what kind of preacher this was. was he a, he wouldn't have had like the little collar, I guess. Uh, probably not Catholic. Um, no, I think a lot of the Episcopal did, ministers, though, and Methodists, they also wore those kind of little collars, like you're maybe. talking about, with the little white. Yeah, you see it in westerns all the time. In fact, yeah, and, and, yeah. Well, uh, so uh, I'll I'll try to mime, like, you know, point to my neck and all that. That's not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I will just warn you. I think you'll misinterpret that. Probably not. Not not speak ugly tongue. Very good, but no. All right. No preacher man. What no. about what about like a monkey man or an ape? type man some sort of monster not here have you heard of such a creature oh yes is it true that he lives further west legend says yes but sometimes here also oh has he come here in your lifetime I have not seen At least but no, you, you were looking for a white man, yes? Yes, yes he, uh... That's right. 
He meant well, but he was gonna come here and convert you all to his religion, you know? You've probably dealt with folks like that before, right? Uh... But, uh... We're we just wondering what happened to him. We got hired to find out what happened to him, really. We... only arrived here... yesterday. Now, have you seen any... boys, uh... from the West carrying goods? Traders? No. Nothing. Well, it's a dead end, I think. Uh, but, you know, at least we, we we turned over the stone, you know. We can rule that out, these fellas here. Now, do you got any other uh, tribes that are more uh, likely to murder someone? You know, some maybe you're, there's some more aggressive types. I wouldn't, not calling you aggressive, but maybe there's some other tribes out there that you know of that might have done killed a man that was trying to preach. I I understand. Um, more south. I, I guess see. you fellas do a lot of moving around, you know, nomadic and all that, yeah. That's almost as good as an answer for me, but... All right, hey, thank you, fellas, and I'll wave politely as best I can. They wave back and uh, okay. turn around and ride off towards their settlement. You know, I'm beginning to have a whole second thoughts about these uh, these native folks out here. They're... Well, what you understand about them folks is they're not just one people. There's a whole bunch of different groups of them. Some of them uh, not too kind, but these fellows were, were nice and polite. Yeah, so that's were. a good thing. It's just uh, you don't want to run into the other type. Well, so of course, it's the same way everywhere, I guess. Back uh, back in New York, you know, the boys from south of 5th, 15th Street were quite a different breed of the boys north of 15th Street, you know what I mean? But, I'm uh, sure, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe we should uh, hit on a little bit out f- further south, west, and then, uh, eh, start heading back to town, maybe, and let the marshal know what's going on with this. If there's, there's murders been done, and every day counts, right, when you're hunting down a, a murderer... That's right. If you don't solve it in the four, first 48 hours, uh, then your chances are cut in half. Well, then, then they're probably cut in half, but uh, it wouldn't hurt to continue on this wide swing south just to make sure these other uh, these other uh, Indians haven't moved off, as our friend here suggested they might have. But, uh, then I say maybe we just uh, angle on to the... Angle on to the southwest for a few more hours, and when it starts getting dark, maybe we can head for home. We'll get home after dark. But, oh well. That's fine. Let's uh, let's get going then. All right. All right. So you're going to sort of swing wide around the uh, the Indian settlement, I, I assume. Not gonna yeah. Just, like, put yeah. a plow right through the middle of it. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, you do that. And uh, are you swinging to the east or the west? We're swinging to the west. Still still on that western trajectory. Starting yeah. in the north and going in a big horseshoe shape, you know, off to the west, veering south, and then eventually back east after a big loop. All right, well... About the time that you've... Uh, you can just barely make out the um, the settlement behind you um, on the on the you know horizon um, you, you pass under a a rare tree and uh, make observation rolls ah this time I succeed I have an eight oh, I got a two oh, nice all right well at j- just as you're passing under this tree and at basically the same time, you spot a uh, a body laying in the grass near the tree that you're passing under. Maybe, um, maybe you better go take a look at that, since you're the lawman. You know. I imagine I will. And I'll dismount and you know, I'm gonna walk up and inspect his body. Well, you walk over and inspect the body, and uh, 
it's immediately clear that this is uh, a person in uh, clergy clo- mm. clothes um, with two arrows sticking out of his back. Mm-hmm. There's our answer to this uh, mystery. Yeah, that's another one solved. That's not much question here. Now, I wonder if I can uh, loosen up these uh, arrows, you know, pluck them out, and maybe there's a different uh, type of uh, arrowhead. Maybe they, these different tribes, uh, you know, carve their arrowheads differently, and we can identify the tribe. And of course, we'd have to ask uh, someone who would know that but to uh, find an Indian agent or something but here's what I'm afraid of we go back there and we say Indians killed uh, Reverend Davis and then uh, they, raid a, they, they they raise a policy and ride off after those nice Indians we were just talking to Although yeah they, they they are liable to to get riled up and go after the good ones let's well, be careful you know with how we disseminate that information when we get back to, to town. that's I why think, yeah definitely get those arrowheads yes uh, get the I'm going to plug these arrows out and uh, snap them. Just keep the arrowheads and... Uh, maybe check if he's got his Bible and his take his collar, maybe, you know. He's, he's, uh, he could have some next to kin or whatnot. The church might like to have his Bible, at least, if he's got it. Yeah, I'll search around the body. It, <clears throat> he does have a, uh, a Bible on him, as a matter of fact. A, a, a few. Uh, Hopefully it's not open to the page about slavery. That would that might have been what happened. I'll will take the Bible uh, and uh, does does he have a collar on him? He does, um, and you can take that as well. Although if you wanted to, and this is completely optional, but you could, you know, slap his slap the corpse like on the back of one of your horses. I was, I was actually that. just thinking of that. That is the more respectful. Well, yeah, they would probably. Yeah, we might as it, well. Got to have a nice Christian burial. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't be the first burial in Dodge City, that's for sure. Well, I, I say that's uh, huh, that's uh, enough mysteries for one day. What do you think? Uh, we we take the poor Reverend's body back to Dodge City. Yeah, I think it's time to get heading home. You got to find that marshal and talk to him first. I'd say. I know there's other people that we were sort of doing these little missions for, but uh, I say we go straight to the marshal with his information, especially about Davis and how he was killed. All right, so you guys uh, ride back east, um, towards back towards Dodge, and it uh, it's you know starting to get on toward dusk, and uh, let's see. And you ride for a few hours, um, and by and by the time, I mean it's it's damn near dark, completely by the time you arrive. But you do pull in, pull in uh, to town, and um, immediately upon seeing you and seeing a body on the back of I don't know whose horse it is, but. Um, this mustachioed marshal rides over and dismounts his horse. It's probably my horse since I weigh a lot less than... Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. I don't <laughs> think my horse can take any more weight. Yeah. Hello, marshal. Evening, gentlemen. What we got here? Well, first of all, marshal, I don't want to cause a panic, but uh, what we got here is uh, the corpse of the Reverend Davis. And uh, we found some arrows in him. Now listen, we passed by uh, one band of natives up there then, and talked to them for a while who just moved in. And I don't think they're responsible at all. In fact, they said there was another tribe further south that might have moved off, but we found him. And uh, Yeah, I believe them uh, Indians we talked to, uh, you know, new neighbors. I think they're the, the good ones. Uh, and so uh, we're looking for another tribe who might have gone further south. Yeah, well, now, yeah. you boys know as well as I do that when word of this gets out, I'm not going to be able to stop them. Well, we thought you might have a slightly better chance than we would. Of course, perhaps perhaps you're looking for a, you know, perhaps you could deputize us and then you'd have uh, uh, 
a bit of uh, extra help. Yeah, we're uh, pretty I good at finding people. In fact, we did a little bit of investigating today you might be interested in. I'll tell him all about it, uh, Uncle uh, Sam. Yeah, well, un unfortunately, this isn't the only body we found. We found Ooh. all the, uh, well, what we're assuming is the Longhorn boys up there on their, <laughs> on their ranch. Except they got bullet holes in them, all of them. And all the cattle missing. Yeah. Oh, well now, that's a problem. I, b oh, I bet I know who it was as well. Who do you think it was? This group of outlaws call themselves the Dodge City Gang. Dodge City Gang. Mm. They could have been a little bit more creative, couldn't they? The rattlesnakes or something, you know. But oh well. Listen, Marshal, how about it? How about you deputize us and we'll help you go after them? We've had a lot of experience today. And look at no. me, I, I can take care of myself. Just look at these cheekbones. Look at these. Look at my nose. My accent's shifting all over the place. Because <laughs> I've been punched so many times, that's the point I'm trying to make. Well, yeah, I'll give it some thought, but it's going to be hard. <clears throat> it's going to be hard work to stop her. Uh, stop these uh, fellas from forming a posse. Well, you know what I got to do? And you don't have to go with me, Uncle, but I feel like I got to ride by night up and to warn those fellas and get them to ride out of here, you know what I'm saying? Don't there could be men coming for them. Well, you are a uh, very moral man. You've got a uh, nice conscience. I see that. Uh, when I can't let you go on your own, of course. Uh, and again, we don't have to role play out the whole thing, but if, if somehow one of us can ride up and warn him, that'd be cool. But well, now you you gave me information about a, a tribe further to the south. That's so right. That, that is where I will have to Send direct the posse. Uh, maybe that'll be all right then. Yeah, what? as long as they uh, aren't heading, you know. East or whatever. We're, we're sort of willing to trust your judgment. That's why we came to you first, because we figure that uh, they didn't just hire any old uh, any old Joe to be the, you know, the marshal here in Dodge. So we figured you you knew a thing or two about a thing or two. Indeed, I do. Hmm. Now is there a man uh, that's maybe a native or half native or something that knows somebody that knows something about arrowheads uh, in this here city? You could be able to as identify the tribe. Yes, as a, ma as a matter of fact, now there might just be yeah. a man by the name of Joe Ghost. All right. But I, I don't I don't know where he might be. He's right. around probably somewhere. Well, do you think you could keep a lid on this information until we get a chance to talk to him? I, not, I mean, information spreads like fire, son. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's true. Well, All right, well, I guess uh, this uh, man uh, needs to head directly uh, to uh, the undertaker. That's you know, right. Taken yeah. care of. Yeah, he and he takes the body off the back of, of yeah, your horse, we'll, Jameis. And we'll let him accept custody of the body. On his, and he says, well, thank you very much for uh, bringing uh, Reverend Davis back. Yeah, hey, don't forget your promise to uh, give it some thought about uh, deputizing us. Yeah, we'll give it some thought. Yes, because uh, you're going to need help going after those uh, those Dodge City gang boys. Well, we just might. I'll, I'll talk to Bad about it. <laughs> another mustache. So he, yes, another mustache. Man. You know, maybe I should grow a mustache. Well, uh, nothing can't go wrong with a mustache. So the marshal, who is f fucking obviously wider, uh, <laughs> right, right, totally, <laughs> rides off uh, with the corpse of Reverend Davis towards the undertaker. And what do you do? Well, maybe we should go uh, let uh, let the old bartender know. What was his yeah. name again? What was that fella's name again? The bartender, Smitty. Smitty. <clears throat> so maybe we yeah. let, let Smitty know that we we found out what happened to his friends there. Oh. Yeah, and I just thought, uh, 
Anyway. Here I was thinking I was going to keep this $100 bill for myself, but now I re- realize this man was uh, wanting to find these, beca- find these fellas because they owed him some money, and I suppose the right thing to do would give this money to old Smitty. You know, I not only do I agree, agree with you on a moral on from moral grounds, but uh, it would also really ingratiate us with the population, you know? It would be seen yeah. as one of the upstanding, trustworthy fellas, the kind of guys who could be deputized. That's true. It's true. Who would ever... Th- and those are the fellas who are looking for you, those Pinkertons, they'd never think of looking amongst the law for a criminal. Well, they might because that's uh, what my former profession was. But, uh... I don't reckon uh, I've made uh, any, uh, I've given any reason for people to be suspicious of me at all. So maybe being a law man might be the right thing to do. Yeah, let's let's go. Let's go. Let's go talk to Smitty, and then maybe if we see uh, uh, Doc Matthews, we can quietly let him know about the Reverend. All right. I bet you we find him at the El Dorado. Both of them. It's my guess. The, you mean the Long Branch? I do. The Eldorado is uh, more of a hotel, right? Correct. Yeah. So uh, you ride off over towards uh, the saloon. Uh, slash boarding house slash max. Um, and uh, walk inside uh, to talk to Smitty. And um, you see... A slightly a similar but but different cast of characters. Um, Marvin is at his corner table, um, reading his uh, Bigfoot book, apparently. <laughs> um, and um, Ernest is at the poker table playing poker. Um, but there are, are the other people around him are different. The Virgils are not at the. Um, Chuckaluck table, although um, Captain Gregory is. Um, Ella is also not here. Um, but Doc Matthews is at the Chuckaluck table, fortunately. And also, in addition to some new faces um, seated around the poker table with Ernest playing poker, uh, conveniently enough, you see what appears to be um, a Native American person, or, or half perhaps Native American person. Which could possibly be Joe Ghost. You know, that's the fella to talk to right there before we go talking to anyone else. Yep, I think that's the man we want. No. So you're just gonna bypass Smitty for the moment? Just for the moment, yeah. I'm gonna, walk, as we walk past Smitty, I'm gonna like hold up my finger, like, hey, we got to talk to you in a minute, you know. And well, then... It gives you a friendly nod. Right. Okay. And uh, as you approach the, the poker table, um, Ernest says, uh, Ah, welcome back from your journey, fellows. Uh, how'd it go? Uh, long story. We're still sorting out some details. I'll tell you all about it over drinks later. All right. Much obliged. Now, is this, uh, is the uh, Joe Ghost, uh, are we sitting close by him now? Yeah, or yeah. He's uh, he's playing poker with Ernest. Oh, yeah, a okay. people at the table, so. You're standing oh, right next to him. So you're the man uh, known as Joe Ghost? That's correct. Uh, who are you? Well, I'm a, uh, just a, I'm new in town. My name's Sam. And I'm Seamus. Sam. We are wondering, if, can we pry you away from the table here, uh, buy you a drink, get a few questions for you about local customs and whatnot? Just for a little bit, sir. Well, this is a little strange, but, um, okay... And he sets his cards down and says, I'll, I'll be right back. I'll be right back, fellas. Uh, got some something to deal with, apparently. Uh, hey, thanks a lot for coming over here with us. And uh, I'll order, like, three whiskeys or whatever, you know. So, yeah, you guys, the three of you, uh, walk over to the bar. And um, Smitty uh, pours you three whiskeys. And you can tell that he's anxious to hear what you have to say ab- about his issue. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, sees that you are currently dealing with something else so he politely like wanders off as so as not to uh, uh, inadvertently eavesdrop of course uh, he doesn't have to go far because it's fucking loud in here and the band's playing and you yeah know. 
anyway, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take those um, arrowheads out of my pocket and just kind of open my hand and show them and ask, uh, you ever you ever see this uh, this type of arrowhead before? Let's give him a roll. Ooh, that's gonna be a two. And he says, uh, where did you get those? Well, now we're trying to keep it on the down low, but just That's between, we, between yeah. us, uh, we found this, uh, these arrowheads buried in the body of old, uh, Reverend Davis. That's why we brought you over here to the table, because we didn't want to start a huge ruckus, you know, and have them rush out and start killing every Indian they saw. We met some pretty nice ones today ourselves. Well, these are the most ineptly produced arrowheads I've ever seen. Not something that the, an actual Indian would have used or made. Hmm. When are you, are you sure? sure about that? Are you sure? I rolled a two. I am sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'll be. I, I I wouldn't know the difference. I thought. Arrowhead's an arrowhead. I mean, I knew obviously that that they had different styles and all that, but you see, this this hair is not native made. So uh, it's like someone's trying to frame. Someone's trying to make right. it look like they did it. Oh, that's right. Hey, 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 hey uh, Mister Ghost, would you would you be willing to repeat this to the marshal if later if he should ask you? Of course. Testify to it, maybe even. Of course. Oh, you're a good fellow. If I had. If I had to, I would, I would bet a good fifty dollars that these were produced by a white man. Hmm. Okay. Yep. That's something. All right. Here's now I wonder if there's the Dodge, the Dodge uh, City gang boys. Maybe. I well, wouldn't know. He, Joe says, but uh, is, if that is all, I will. Yeah, we'll let you get back to your game. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Very Ghost. Well. Much obliged. I'm glad we talked to him. It was a good idea. Good to let the marshal know about this. But first, we should probably call Smitty over. Yeah, and you kind of waggle your fingers at him, and Smitty comes over and he says, Hey, oh, man, so like, uh, what, what was I forgot what his fucking voice sounded like. I think he just had a southern accent. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, Oh, did he? No, was he? He was. Was he also Irish, or was that the other? No, that's no, the Scottish the, guy at the uh, or Scottish eatery. Oh yeah, that's right. When he he kind of leans on the bar and leans over towards you guys and says, uh, "All right, so did you learn anything?" Sure did. Learned an awful lot, I guess. Uh, good news, bad news, mostly bad news, I suppose. The good news is, here's a hundred bucks for you. Greenbacks. Oh, my. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, well, well, wait a second now. How much do uh, those boys owe you? <laughs> uh, fifty, and if you want the other fifty, well, I imagine oh, you've earned thank it. Thank you for for uh, being an honest gentleman there. I'll make that two little uh, sets of twenty-five there. Thank you for being an honest gentleman <laughs> as well. I told you that would pay off. All right. All right, so we each get 25. Now, but now for the bad news. <clears throat> Go ahead, Uncle. Uh, yeah, those, uh, those, um, Longhorn boys you were after, uh, well, they're not alive no more. Oh, damn. Well, that's unfortunate, but probably the damn Dodge City gang. Mm. Now that's what we've heard. It was a big cattle raid. All of them were killed. Execution style. Yeah, that's right. And uh, and then all the cattle missing, place burned down. So it's a real tragedy. Damn. All that's right. Cool. Well, thanks for looking into it for me, anyway. No problem, Smitty. If we can ever do something else for you, let us know. After all, the marshal can't be everywhere. <laughs> we'll do. Perhaps you'll get deputized. Maybe so. Uh, yeah, Seamus is really pushing hard for the. He's starting to imagine himself walking around and and Ella seeing him with the little, you know, gold star, silver star, tin star, whatever it is. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that sounds like a question for next time. 
It does indeed, as I think we should probably uh, bring this episode to a close, although there's a ton of stuff that you could do right now. I think we've run out of time, um, and so I think we should probably just pick back up right here. Right, in this very second, on our next when episode. We, when we come back All right. next time. All right. All right, then good night, everyone, and we will see you in about a week.